Hypocrisy. Hello and welcome. Hello. Well, wait, what, what's up, guys? Welcome to Lost <laughs> Fighting the Interwebs. I'm your host, Nick Ricardo, Ricardo Law, small law firm in central Minnesota. And I'm so fucking angry. <laughs> so I'm screaming at Megan Fox backstage. I'm like, why can't I hear you? Are you a mute, Helen Keller? <laughs> at least she could go. <laughs> but no, no, she's sitting there just like miming words. And uh, I figure out that my roadcaster flipped the indicator light for some reason. I don't know. So, like, the button was how it was supposed to be. But now I have to do it in reverse. I hate my life. <laughs> I really did think it was my fault, for sure. I was like, well, well I'm sure, it's sure me it was. I'm a dummy. Yeah. Well, medium dummy. You're medium, <laughs> medium. dumb. Medium dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to my guest, Megan Fox. Wait, you don't have a proper tagline. Why don't you have this? Mm, no, fill not it out. That uh oh, one. oh no! There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Perfect. Hey, it's been a long time. Nice to see you. I know it has why, been. Why don't you ever return my calls? <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> you are such a dick. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's the problem. As I don't return your calls. Cheers, Nick, to me not returning your calls. Someday you'll figure out a phone, Megan. Can't figure out <laughs> headphones or regular phones. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, what's up to uh, my homies in chat? Legal Vices, Danny on direct, C. Goody. Welcome to the Mod Squad. Someone in here say, was like, why is this chat all gay talk and trans talk? I really wanted to watch this show, but none of all this gay talk is happening. <laughs> If you're opposed to gay talk, you're in the wrong place, the wrong time. But anyway, uh, yeah, welcome. You have been telling me about this lawsuit for a while. I know. And you're like, you have to cover this. And I'm like, well, I respond to you. I'm like, Megan, I definitely want to cover this. Please tell me more. And then you don't respond for like two months. Uh, that's exactly how it went down. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I'm an I, ass like that. You know, I don't respond to my friends and I just leave them hanging. You can ask anyone. I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of a dick. So I'm sorry. It's, uh, no, it's, it's all me. I stopped responding <laughs> to almost anybody. Um, because I just hate doing it. Uh, not really, not really. There's uh, complicated reasons for it that involve me not knowing how to use the internet. But that being said, uh, I'm really glad to start covering this one. Cause once you told me about it way back in like, I don't know, 2021 or whatever. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, this sounds hilarious. Can you give us a synopsis of this? Because if I say it, people will be like, oh, he's joking. What's the real lawsuit? Okay, I can actually. I had ChatGPT help me make a two-minute summary of this. So we can maybe start there. Okay. And then maybe you have questions and we can kind of unravel it from there. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is ChatGPT's attempt to unravel this. Okay. Clayton Eckert, he's an ex-NFL player and a Bachelor contestant turned realtor, met podcaster Laura Owens when she that, claimed... What? That whole, like, that whole line is sad. <laughs> ex-NFL player, Bachelor contestant turned realtor. It's like, oh, God. I just... Yeah. <laughs> like going Poor down guy. the steps. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then it got worse from there because when he met this woman, she decided to take even that away from him. So she even went after his real estate license. Uh, I They had a brief encounter. She claimed that he, she wanted him to sell her real estate. She found him on LinkedIn, by the way. That's your first red flag. Oh, my God. Nick's already dancing in his chair. I've missed that. <laughs> I am <laughs> always... I hate LinkedIn. It's the worst website on the planet. There are people who are good at yeah. it. I'm like, why is this a thing? How do you, is there ads? Is there revenue? And they're like, no, there's referrals. <laughs> That's for people who try. No. <laughs> well, it's for people who work for a living, you know, outside of the internet. It's not for people like us, really. I have a no. LinkedIn page, but it's just for, just to show I exist. I'd never go there. I don't update it. It is what it is. Um, yeah, and you can't get rid of the email notifications. They're constant. Mm -hmm. It's like, 
Oh, and they want to add you to LinkedIn. You're like, I have five of these accounts and I don't know how to use any of them because I keep hitting the click uh, to add to LinkedIn. It's like, it's like, well, we'll create a new one for your email address. It's the same one. It's very <laughs> weird. I don't like it. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. So she finds I know like that if you go on LinkedIn, you could run into people like this. So she, this woman named Laura Owens, finds him on LinkedIn and he's working for a real estate company. She claims, she tells him, she sends him a little message. She says, I want to buy some real estate from you. And um, he goes to show her some places. One thing leads to another. Now she's sending him nudes. On As one does when you're trying to buy a house. I guess. Well, he's also a very strapping young lad. He's a very good looking cat. And he says, I'm used to this. I'm used to being flirted with by women. And, you know, it happens. So that must be cool. What's his name? Clayton? What? Eckerd. E-C-H-A-R-D. He's a good looking guy. I mean, he's oh, a I see. Yeah. His, his chin's the size of my whole body. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's he definitely doesn't have problems picking up the chicks. <clears throat> So Let's see, I don't believe you. you know, we got we to ask chat. Okay, is this, is this a handsome man or not? Uh, chat. Smash or pass. Smash or pass. This is a man, Megan. You don't smash a man. <laughs> so here we go. So, uh, so yeah, guys, like, what do, what do we think, chat? All the guys in chat, smash or pass. He's got a curly mullet now. He, he got a perm or something and he has a mullet. So I'm not really digging the mullet. <laughs> Why does he have a mullet? I don't uh, know. Is he, this is he, the th all the kids are doing it now. Did he, uh, so did he lose his real estate license? No, thank God. Uh, that didn't happen, but. Okay, I'm figuring so this, that's why he had a mullet. Did you see, did you see Fatal Attraction with Glenn Close? Uh, not, I don't think so. Are you kidding? I mean, I might've, but I don't movie? remember. How can you not have seen this movie? This is insane. That, that is one of the greatest movies ever made. You have to see it. Anyway. Oh, his so, mullet makes him look way worse, though. I, I, I'm i not a fan of the mullet, but come on, don't kick a guy when he's down. He's having some serious problems now. The mullet, like, squeezes his ear, the, like, the head around <laughs> the ears and squeezes him in. I know. Looks like his hair is filling up under his, like, under his scalp and just waiting to burst out into curly mulletness. It's weird. Well, it's, like, it's odd. Listen, he's like 6'4 or something. He's a very big, muscular guy. That, look at it, the size of his neck. I mean, you're, this what is are you a guy. What trying to say, Megan? <laughs> I'm saying that the ladies don't object, okay? Don't object. They really don't. He's very popular with the girls. In fact, all he has to do is invite them over and their pants come off. So he invites this girl over. He says he's doing a gummy and he was under the influence of some THC and he made a bad decision and told her to come over. She came over. <laughs> he was under the influence of some THC. <laughs> well, I just wasn't in control of myself with all this THC in my body. <laughs> I made a bad decision. Asked a girl to come over after she sent me nudes. I didn't know what was going to happen. Oh, my God. It's like the, all the women accusing Harvey Weinstein. It's like, no, wow. he knew what was going to happen, obviously. <laughs> it's not like he's not saying, I, you know, we were going to hook up. Or, you know, that was what was going to happen. But there was no, according to him, there was no actual peen in the vag. None of that. There was two, and this is funny, two blowies. Okay. Two. Completion both times? Yeah, but there was five hours in between, according to him. So the details are important, though. We got to get the details. Yeah, you got to get your vitamin E back or whatever. <laughs> because so there was the blow job, and then there was dinner and, like, hanging out and television watching. And then there was another blow job at some point and some naked grinding. Okay. There were, yes, <laughs> oral arguments and a rebuttal. Thank you, Legal Vices. We had oral arguments and a rebuttal. <laughs> why is he, why is he naked grinding? <laughs> well, I don't know. Cause I guess you do. I've never really heard of the naked blow job to tell you the truth. I don't think I've ever been fully done the fully naked blow. Like if you're just doing the blow Lord job. Knows I have. I, if you're just doing the BJ, do you go for the fully naked both of you? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like but the naked grinding is what's weird. Like just close the deal, man. This guy can't sell any houses. <laughs> well, you know, he was, I guess, trying to be safe, right? He doesn't want any babies from some chick he hooked up with on a on LinkedIn of all places. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess if I was picking up women from LinkedIn, I wouldn't want to have actual penetration either. Just. 
you know, go knock on the door, but don't don't go inside. Right. So, you know, there was some there was just like four playing stuff. OK, what position did he play in football? Oh my God. This is a. Why would I know that? Why would it be something I would know? Plan Eckerd position. Oh God. <laughs> don't, don't Google that. Oh boy. He played, uh, I don't want to go to the images thing. I want to go to the regular thing. Tight end. <laughs> <laughs> Can't make that shit up. Maybe, maybe he's not good at pulling out because maybe oh. he never enters. Oh God, stop it. This is terrible. We're not supposed to be roasting Clayton on this stream. <laughs> Where else are you going to get this coverage, Megan? <laughs> okay, uh, okay, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Eckerd tries to break things off the next day. He meets her again for the house thing, and he tells her after he shows her the, the homes, look, I, I didn't want to do this, and um, I'm sorry that I did. I don't want a relationship. But she flips her shit. Five days later, and all actually all throughout this, she's still texting him like every day, like, why don't you want to give us a chance? Like red flags off the charts. Why don't give us a chance? I need, I want a relationship with you. And uh five days later, she sends him a ominous text that says, I just want to let you know I know that I'm fertile and there's a chance I could be pregnant. <laughs> and he's like, nah. <laughs> Yeah, There's he's like, no, you couldn't because there was no intercourse and that's how you get pregnant. I'm not a dummy. And she said, no, 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 no. There was some of your stuff down there. So her claim was that during the naked grinding, there was some pre-cum mm. and it got rubbed around and a couple of, or it was either that or the, the crusty stuff left over from blowjob number one was still was still active which is ridiculous because sperm can't live outside of the body for more than two minutes so, maybe not yours but clayton's can yeah that's maybe a, does he have super not, sperm i don't know i don't know he's a thick neck maybe they got thick tails <laughs> well it's still ridiculous like the idea and anyway he says no way there was no pre-cum you feel that shit i didn't feel it uh so and he says he didn't go in so there's that also. All right. But he did say that she did act weird after the second one. She got up immediately and ran to the bathroom. So now he's thinking, oh, my God, what if she held it in her mouth and like yeah. spit it out? And then like, I don't know, turkey basted it in there. Yeah, the old, the old spit thing. and tuck. <laughs> That's, That's how we did it back in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's so bad it's so sad it's so sad that we have to even have these conversations i mean we're 13 minutes into a youtube stream and i've already said pre-cum and turkey baster like this story is wild and if any of my children are watching this turn it off St i know i'm not kidding you're learning too much <laughs> the internet is not for learning children I've already told, I actually told my girls because I have two teenagers, they know all about this story. So actually I was just kidding. Uh, they know all about the story because I was like, uh, by the way, children, are any of you under the impression that you can get pregnant from blowjobs? <laughs> and they about died. They were like, what? <laughs> that was so oh, funny. That, if you weren't you, I have terrible jokes for that, but I'm not going to say them. All right. Out of respect. Right. I appreciate that. Well, that's, that's lovely. <laughs> all right so what else happened right. here 11 day okay 11 days later and in but in that five day period she was also emailing the board of realtors and trying to get him fired because she had w told him she wanted to put in two contracts on on million dollar properties two million dollar properties and he didn't believe her. He was like, this chick is crazy. She's going to back out of this. If I put these, these uh, offers in, it's going to be bad. Either way, she's going to back out. So he told her that he did, but he didn't actually put them in. Sure enough, just as he thinks, she starts, did you put the offers in? How come you didn't put the offers in? Now I don't know if I want to work with you, blah, blah, blah. I'm just saying this man is bad at putting it in. <laughs> all right i didn't see that coming i didn't know uh, <laughs> neither <anything>. did he <laughs> well, I mean, oh man well this this is actually a serious ethical problem right for him he cannot put those offers in 
if he thought he was going to like a real estate license, he's sitting here working with a client who's going to prospectively put in multiple offers on $2 million for the property. And he goes and does some, even just the blowjobs and little, little naked grinding on the side. Like it, it's like going to Outback Steakhouse and ordering a steak. It's like, this is almost a steak. And uh, you do your little naked grinding. He cannot put those offers in, right? Like that. I'm well, not a realtor, but I, like, okay, so I can't do that as a lawyer. I tried. What he should have done was say, I will not work with you anymore. I'm turning you over to my uh, supervisor. You will deal with him with these offers. He didn't do that for whatever reason. He decided it was a good idea to tell her he put them in, but then not actually put them in, which is a violation of his ethical codes for real estate ag or agents. But here's the good news. After the investigation was done of him from the board, they saw his evidence. They saw the emails and the text messages and they were like, son, we're sorry. You're fine. <laughs> and like, we're, we're not going to, you did violate your, your ethics, but we're not going to take any action against you. So he still has his license. He got like a letter, a strongly worded letter or whatever, but they chose not to take any. Can you any imagine action. being on the real estate board and they're like, oh. So wait, what happened? He's like, well, she was sending me nudes. Ah, oh, you're gonna have to turn over all those texts. We're gonna need to see this <laughs> right away. We're gonna need to see the nudes. Oh my lord, uh, this gets so much weirder. Eleven days after this, so she's already gone to the ARDC and she's already just gone to his boss. She's sending. She's trying to destroy his life now because he doesn't want to date her. Um, Eleven days later, he gets a text message. She's pregnant. She has tested HCG positive on a P stick test. And of course he still doesn't believe her. So he's like, come over and uh, we'll talk about it. And he's got his own pregnancy test and he didn't make her take it in front of him though, which I can't believe. And she knew he was going to have one somehow. When she got there, she was like, Oh, I bet you have a pregnancy test you want me to take. And he was like, well, yeah, I do. So here it is. And then he let her go into the bathroom, though, without watching her, which I can't believe. But I have a I have a theory that I think this woman actually pees positive for other reasons. I think it's like her hat trick. I think it's like if she were an X-Men with an X-Men with a really ridiculous mutant, uh, <laughs> like, a, what is it? What do you call hey, it? Uh, a mutant, a mutant power, right? Like the mutant, mutant the power. Action. They're like, hey, Cavernous, the superheroine. Uh, what is your special power? Well, I always be positive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like the, in the failed X-Men bar, you know, where they all sit around the ones who didn't make it. Like she's sitting there. She's like, well, I can pee positive. I think that she can do that for whatever reason. She can always pee positive. Some people have high HCG counts for different medical reasons. It's not always pregnancy. Now we don't know. That's just my theory. Sure. So that, that pee stick that she did in front of, in front of him, sort of behind the closed door that came up positive as well, but with a very faint line. Um, she refused to get anything. She refused to let him come to a sonogram. She wouldn't let him talk to her doctor. She kept making these alleged, you know, appointments to go get a sonogram. And then she would say that he wasn't allowed to come because she was afraid of him or whatever. She had a urgent care P test that she shows everyone like, oh, look, I'm pregnant. It's another HCG test. Okay, but if your superpower is peeing positive, this is still not proof. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the, I told you this was going to be two minutes, but I got off topic. Okay, so eventually both fault, of them, really. both of them get protection orders against each other. Owens testifies in court about being 100% pregnant in November. She says she's 24 weeks pregnant in November, but then said she wasn't pregnant a month later when she files her motion to dismiss this paternity action she filed. She filed a paternity action in August, August 1st, sure. for a parenting plan. By November, she's in a hearing. She says, I'm 100% pregnant. By December, now she's filing to withdraw, saying, I'm no longer pregnant. But his lawyer is like, no, you fucking don't. We, you're staying in court because we're now going to get an order from the judge that you lied about all of this. She claimed at, the, at this last status hearing, her doctor told her the pregnancy ended a month or two months before November, which she said she didn't know when and couldn't pinpoint. There's a trial that's coming up on June 10th. I'm going to be there. Uh, I'm going to be there covering it. Dave Neal, who's a Bachelor podcast host, he's going to be there too. He's going to be covering this as well. Um, so now, when you 
When you say Bachelor podcast host, do you mean a podcast about the show The Bachelor? Mm -hmm. There's an entire entertainment news thing yeah, all about I Bachelor know. content. So Dave Neal actually does something called The Bachelor Rush Hour, and he does entertainment topics too, and he's kind of branching out to do other stuff other than The Bachelor, and he's really quite hilarious. He's a comedian, and uh, he's been through a lot. Laura Owens filed a harassment suit against him as a member of the media. She filed an order of protection against a media member for telling this story. And so he had to like raise money, spend $10,000, get an attorney, try and fight her off. And of course it went nowhere because the judge was like, I can't give her a protective order against a journalist without a hearing. So no, we have to have a hearing. And then the hearing never happened because they settled out of court. She made him sign something that said, he wouldn't incite violence against her, which is a thing he never did anyway. So yeah, dumb. Uh, but she is, she's, she's threatened law talk with Mike. Do you know law talk with Mike? She sent yeah, him I met a, him. She sent him a cease and desist letter, which is hilarious. He read it on stream because he played one of her hearings and the hearings are crazy. Nick, I have some clips for you from those hearings with the fake baby bump. I didn't even get to the fake moon bump yet. When she had a fake, she was wearing one of those fake uh, yeah. bumps. Uh huh. Uh huh. And it was like all the way up over her boobs. It was insane. It's it's absolutely insane. Wait till you see it. It's gonna be so good. You're gonna love it. What uh, is she? How? What size is this person? Is she tall? Is she? No, short? she's very thin. She's very thin. Um, I don't know how tall she is, but she's thin. And is so there pictures can, of her online. Oh, yeah. I got pictures for you. I got belly pictures. I have all kinds of pictures. Should we just skip right to the pictures? I mean, I don't I don't know. All we right. Let's keep going. See. All right. I just always see. think I'm like, hmm, do we, we are in the moment learning about this person. I'm trying to picture a baby bump that goes like all the way up over her chest. Like, is she a tiny right. petite woman? Here we go. I'm going to share this with you. She is. She is tiny. Now, here we go. All right. These are the uh, baby belly pictures. So let's look at 912. So she's a horseback rider. She does jumping competitions. This is her on September 12th of 2023. No belly, zero. A week sure. later, one week later, she claims that this is her belly in, on September 19th. One week. Did anybody reverse image search that? <laughs> who, who that actually is? Uh, it, it, it's her face. We had to scratch out her face. Like we oh. think she, we think that she definitely either. Well, for one, like most people can push their bellies out that big, but in this third one, this third picture here, it's yeah. an actually it's from a video, and people on Reddit found, and you can't see it in this photo, but there's another picture of the full screen. There is a warp mark in the doors up in the door up here in the door frame. Sure. I think this was her belly was pulled out with Photoshop, if I could guess. If she was because, a true Chad, she would do the Mentos Diet Coke thing. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever seen people have. do that? It's horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 I think you could probably kill yourself that way. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, and now we look, we know for a fact that these pictures can't be real because there's a whole new date involved now with her new lawyer. So this was back when she said that the miscarriage might have been in September or October. So we're still like, okay, I guess she was allegedly 17 to 18 weeks pregnant there. On October 24th, this is the belly bump that she showed up in at court. Look at this, Nick. Does this look real to you? No. It's way too high. And it's way too, like, there's just something, and wait till you see it in action. I've got, we've got the, um, I've got the... Some of the things you say, just, they rank them, that's all. <laughs> oh, well, don't censor yourself. You know I can take a joke. No, it, was not, it wasn't like a gross show. It was like, see it in action. Like, what? <laughs> how do you see a baby bump in action? I'm not sure what Oh, oh, yeah, you can. Um, let's see, where's my, I have the court footage. But see, we're out of order now, but that's okay. Um... This show is not ordered. The show is <laughs> chaos. <laughs> Let's see. Where is it? Uh, October 24th. This is the October 24th hearing. So uh, I do have a large following. I am a public figure. I was just a celebrity, I suppose. I She's going to start rubbing um, that belly. 
uh, I have a large following, and then that audience, I cannot control what they do. Uh, but they then went and found that court case in the system um, and found her name and then started to talk about her online. Uh, and then Laura, I assume, was feeling pressure from it being online and her name being out there. She then sends me this alarming message, which, again, I felt was harassing, but she threatened to kill herself. I don't think anybody should ever receive a message such as that. All right. I'm going to uh, continue to object. Okay, there is another view of it where she goes further away from the camera and it's outrageous. Yeah. I mean, it's outrageous. There. And plus, this thing uh, uh, with like the two hand rub is weird. Uh, yeah, especially because she's also rubbing up by her boobs, not her belly. I mean, someone so, has to since he won't. He's. He and her boobs also never got any bigger, which is also a red flag. Because when you're pregnant, you know those those suckers get bigger. Just saying. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been around a pregnant woman, Megan, a couple yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, a few times. So you know what that what that's like. Like that's one of the first signs they get like real like swollen and sore. So yeah, yeah and, and I, if her belly's up that high, her ribs would be like swollen out, like Jamba the Hutt. That that would be terrifying. And this is not real. It's just not real. And I'm not buying it. And she really starts to freak out. Now watch her facial expression. And you're going to see the whole belly when she moves backwards. Because she's going to start walking around and flailing her arms and making these crazy faces. Because he is explaining to people, to the judge that she has done this to three, two other men that he knows of. So three men total. That's the big reveal here. Because um, she's done this multiple times. And I believe that she'll continue to do it. So I am trying to, for one, there she goes. With me, but I'm also trying to bring to light that this individual continues to do similar uh, repeated patterns of behavior. And uh, it has been extremely stressful. I have been very, very, very stressed out by receiving these constant influx of messages that could have all been. Look at that time. weirdness from the so side. Yeah. All the way back at, She's at, at the earliest time that we were in. Odd able to one. Go. I, none of this had to have happened. Didn't have to take it this far. But the point, is, like the, what I'm, the point I'm making is, she never actually wanted to take it until I went public and stated I signed up for a prenatal attorney test. Now, okay, that is the that is the fakest looking belly. Look at this. Look at this yeah. frame here. It's the fakest looking belly I ever saw in my whole damn life. And she has a really hard time controlling her faces. Her faces are just like, I, if I were her lawyer, I'd be like, oh my God, sit down and sh stop making those faces. Um, so the fake baby belly, we get to a status hearing. And at the status hearing in February, we get this guy, her new lawyer, because she's she goes through so many lawyers. This is like her second lawyer on the case, and then in February she's got a third one, and now she has a fourth one in the and same. He's a gem, a gem, a what? A gem, like he's a gem. The new lawyer, like he's a, oh, he's a God. treasure a prize. Yeah, he's a prize. All right, a, a the jewel, new lawyer. so to speak. He uh, he's the one that filed the motion to compel her uh, his attorney to go to lunch. <laughs> The last person I saw try to do that was, uh, oh my God, what's his stupid name? The weird Russell Greer trying to compel Taylor Swift to a uh, to dinner, but definitely not a date to resolve their <laughs> lawsuit. I'm willing to settle, but only over dinner with Taylor Swift. So we kind of have to back up because, of course, her first attempt at kind of extorting him was very interesting so she she does this um she does this thing where she tells these men she's interested in that she wants to date them and in right. exchange for the dating with intention she'll have an abortion <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah wait while she's pregnant or because she might get pregnant no, but while she says she's pregnant, and if you want me to have an abortion, you have to date me with intention, and she has a whole contract to sign. Oh, that's not enforceable at all. I have the contract. You're going to love it. <laughs> but well, listen, I'm, you want, I know you right now this? I'm kind of plump, but <laughs> we can fix that if you're interested. <laughs> yeah, but also, too, 
I'm getting an email from this woman with a positive pregnancy yeah, test. Right. There's that. So, so you're trying to figure out. So I'm like, well, I'm taking, taking her out of work. Again, I'm, I, I'm taking her out of work because at this point, I'm, I'm not aware of what I'm dealing with. So I'm like, I, I did. Oh my gosh. Like how? So then she goes, well, um, you know, since I'm pregnant now, I'll take abortion medications, but I'll only do it if you we, we date exclusively for two weeks. How did she communicate that? Via email? Email. You have an email of her yes. stating this? Yes. Yeah, but Certainly. also, too, I'm getting an email. Okay, so she sends him an email about this, uh, her demands, and uh, she sends him a contract, too. So let's look at the email first, because the email is insane. Mm. Okay. It says, I come home tomorrow afternoon so if you want us to consider an abortion, this really is our last chance because of timing <laughs> and the fact that neither of us would want to end the pregnancy once there is a heartbeat. I would like to get together tomorrow night to talk and explore intimacy. It's time for you to make an effort that is, if it's something we are considering, obviously I would love to have sex in the future. And I feel like I'm the safest person you could have sex with since I'm pregnant. But if yeah. you really, if you really think, like you said yesterday, my goal was to date and get pregnant during this time, we can absolutely hold off on it. However, it occurred to me, you might believe me more about paternity if you were inside of me. I felt how tight I would be after not having sex in more than a year. Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> What homeboy is going to sit there and go, oh, you're pregnant after not having sex in more than a year? What happened? <laughs> How did this nightmare occur? Like, well, who's, who would believe? Mm, okay, anyway, but that's also not how that works. But um, it's also an indication here where she's admitting he was never inside of her, isn't she? Because if he had been, why would she need to tell him how tight she is down below? Yeah. OK, yeah. but later on in this case, she's going to start claiming that he not only was inside of her, but he but he graped her. Right. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's an inconsistency. Yeah, that's an inconsistency. I love this last sentence, too. Maybe then you'd believe I hadn't been sleeping around. And again, you wouldn't be doing me any big favor. Having sex with me is a privilege. And not <laughs> 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 oh, my God. I kind of like her. Danny on direct says, oh, my God, is this Steve Gosney's new romance novel? <laughs> <laughs> well, she has to By kill the him way, first. He just sent me a signed copy and I cannot get over this cover. My oh, daughter found this in so my office good. and she was like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, would you believe me if I told you the most Catholic guy I know wrote this? <laughs> what do you mean? What is death penalty desires? <laughs> 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 oh my god all right so we have now i look if you don't if you either don't get back to me tonight or if you give me the final word that you don't want to date and choose the outcome of the pregnancy we are 100 percent having the child and there is no going back i mean it and i'm at peace either way so basically she's saying i'm going to be in your life forever whether you want me to be there or not horrible yeah yeah that's uh she's like uh she's like cancer <laughs> i'm hanging oh, around so bad sticking with you for a while it's so bad it's so bad um it, she literally had one email to him that the subject line was if i don't hear from you i'm having the babies like it's a going out of business sale, fire sale. You've got 24 hours. So wait, this is to the guy who got her pregnant. Like the same guy? He didn't actually get her pregnant. Well, I mean, There's allegedly, no right? Yes. Yeah, no, I, I know. But she's like, look, if you want to keep dating me, like we we can get rid of these and try yeah, again. But you okay. have to keep dating me. That's and if so you weird. and and the really weird thing is, let's see, I think there's a I have the actual contract here somewhere. Um, but 
yeah, these, these things are crazy. So anyway, he says, no, I'm not having a baby with you under any circumstances. And he sends her a few text messages that are like, no, you're crazy. I don't want anything to do with you. I will not have a baby with you. So she starts collecting those text messages, the angry text messages, and she starts threatening him that she's going to go to the media. Like if you don't, now, if you don't, you know, do the right thing, I'm going to go to the media with these and I'm going to tell them that you're such a bad man. Um, so she files the paternity suit on August 1st, September 11th. She does go to the media September 14th. Mm, twin she... towers, twin pregnancies. I'm seeing correlation here. <laughs> I didn't even make that correlation. That's a good one. We hadn't seen that one yet. We had the tonsil twins, the mouth babies, but yes, the twin towers pregnancy. Maybe good logic says maybe two blowies. That's why it's twins and not just a single pregnancy. Did she get pregnant with each blowy? Yeah. Well, you can't get pregnant with two babies with the same blowjob, Megan. You have to do it twice. <laughs> if you want twins, that's what you got to do. She should have had a mistake and gone for a triplets. It's crazy. It's it absolutely insane. Um. On the 14th of September, after she goes to the media, she files a motion to seal the case because she claims the media is interested in the case that she alerted them to. So, yeah, that's in bad faith. That's unclean hands. On September 18th, she goes to more media, including the son, and the son runs with it. And the son talks to Clayton, tries like Clayton tries to give them all of his evidence. And they're like, yeah, we're probably not going to use this. And he's like, you're going to ruin my life. And somebody at the sun told him, you'll be all right. Uh, all, all press is good press. You'll be fine. Oh my God. <laughs> so they run with the text messages that are totally redacted from all the important stuff, like the, you know, the context. Right. And, and so it makes him look like a total dick. Like he's a guy who knocks somebody up and he's telling her to get an abortion. And th this is what they run with. They run with these bachelor alum, Clayton Eckert, allegedly told woman who claims to be pregnant with his twins to get an abortion. <laughs> oh, this is great. That's what happened. Yeah. So then on September 22nd, she put, so she wants all this media attention. She posts on Reddit. She makes these, she writes these medium articles about it. I am the anonymous woman in the Clayton scandal. Here's the proof. Here's my story. She also provides Redditors with links to her public Dropbox full of those photos of her pregnant belly, texts and emails to Eckerd side by we all that's where we got all this stuff wait she uses reddit mm -hmm. i thought this was a real woman not a gay man <laughs> she gave them an entire dropbox of all her alleged you know <laughs> what am i trying to say <laughs> evidence <laughs> that's an r slash pregnant mommy don't know how i know about it <laughs> it's nuts so on september 27th you saw that photo she was photographed jumping at a horse competition with no belly right and then we have her winning she she was in a news article that she placed sixth place in it we um allegedly 20 weeks into her twin pregnancy which is crazy that didn't happen yeah your first pregnancy 20 weeks you might even start to show normally um with twins you're definitely showing it 20 oh you're definitely showing it 20 weeks with twins Right. Laura, Laura then got him canceled from one of his speaking engagements that he had. He like spoke for mental health, whatever. I don't know. At some, <laughs> <laughs> the comedy of her getting him kicked off a mental health panel is hilarious. Like when you really think about it. I know it's true. Espe oh, her podcast is about mental health. It's called Nobody <laughs> Told Me, and it's about mental health. I sh I shit you not. Now her parents. I forgot to tell you this. Her dad is a famous dude in San Francisco. Ooh. He's a he's a millionaire. He is a um, his name is Ron Owens. Ron with two N's, which is bizarre. And he is he was a radio talk show host making like a million dollars a year. So he he might be worth like twenty five million dollars. Her mom is a journalist who goes by the name of Jan Black. That's not her real name, but that's her journalist name. So they're like real we wealthy, you know upper class people in San Francisco, they're in contact with a lot of, oh, you know, other upper class San Francisco people like NFL players, like, you know, people who might hang around Joe Montana or whatever. And it turns yeah. out that like, there's a report now of somebody who's connected to Joe Montana, his business partner, being her first 
possibly her first victim in 2014 that she faked a pregnancy with. He won't come forward. His name is Matt. He refuses. He, his lawyer sent me a nasty threat letter. Those are always fun. Hey, Matt. Come. Like he didn't last time. <laughs> come forward. He really should. I mean, he should. I don't know what he's waiting for. Like these three other guys got dragged into this nightmare and they don't have any money. This guy, Matt, he has money. He's Joe Montana's business partner in this big financial company. He lives in this like, you know, palatial estate in California on the, on the beach. Like he's got nothing he, uh, to lose. I wonder if he signed an NDA on a settlement with her. Like just mm, fuck off. Maybe. Here's 10 grand. Go away. Abort the fake babies, you bitch. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. So she got him canceled from his uh, thing. She's posting weird internet Instagram posts. Look at this. Eckerd twins coming February. Oh, guess what date she chose in February to be her due date. Can you Valentine's guess? Valentine's Day, of course. Absolutely. Cupid's yeah. twins. Yes, of course. They're, they're fraternal twins. It's a boy and a girl, and they're already in love. An Alabama story. So sometime around this time, Dave Neal gets in, into the story. And Dave starts reporting it because he, Dave started, I think he picked it up when it was in the sun. He starts reporting it. He thinks it smells weird. You know, he's like, this doesn't, this doesn't seem like the Clayton I know. Kind of like I, her. I don't think this is right. And then reality, Steve, same thing. Those are the only two guys in the batch, the whole bachelor nation who are like, this story isn't right. And we should do some digging. So they start digging into it. Laura freaks out starts sending them all of her evidence well she sends dave a, a a sonogram video that she claims is hers and she sends the same one to reality steve and she sends it on uh email from her email so check this out wait when did he have sex with her he didn't have sex with her oh allegedly megan allegedly may of uh may 20th of 2023. Okay, yeah, gotcha. I heard her, never mind. That doesn't okay. add up either. That's a wrong that's a wrong due date. What do you mean? Cuz it's 40 we or uh it's it's 9 months after your first missed period. Like that's oh, yeah, a due no, date calculation. It's all been wrong. It's all been wrong. She also wouldn't tell anybody when her last missed period was. And look what she put at the top of her ultrasound. Uh, it was it this one because she's given a couple different ones and on one of the ultrasounds that she um, produced, it actually had the date May 20th on it, the date she hooked up with him. Yeah, <laughs> of the end of her last period, like it's so ridiculous. So this is Dave Neal. He's the host of uh, Bachelor Rush Hour and he's a stand up comedian. He's a really cool dude. He gets this sonogram video and he they find him in reality, Steve, go back and they find that it is an exact copy of a six-year-old ultrasound that's on somebody else's blog. And he he proves it. And he can he, this is so cool. I don't know how he figured out how to do this. I'm so technologically dumb. We're watching it. It ends right now. Oh, excuse me. You see the placenta on both sides hits at the same exact second. And that's where the sink begins. And the sink ends right here. Now the video on the left shows that baby B is there and points out and now it sinks again. So she edited out this part right here. She edited it out. I don't know why, but she edited out baby B maybe because there's the, um, there's the, uh, uh, little, uh, mouse code there. Maybe she didn't want that involved. And again, I say she, it could have been someone else. Again, it might not be Jane Doe. We're going to get into that. So the sink ends, the sink comes back, baby, baby a on both sides perfectly. You know, when you and said synced, and now baby B comes back, I was thinking something. I mean, I got this different. down to the frame that has it exactly, exactly the same. So it's literally the same. She just ripped off somebody else's video, but what she changed is up here at the top. So you can see this one doesn't have that header. She put a header on it that says uh, S M I L. This is important. This is Southwest Medical Imaging. Uh, that's the name of the company, Imaging Labs. And, uh, she changed it. She changed this up here and she cut out certain parts of it, but this is definitely not a, her sonogram. So, you know, I've watched movies. Never mind. I'm not going to say yeah, it. No, I'm not going to say ahead. what I was going to. No, it's fine. I'm not going <laughs> to say, look, there are movies where two people look highly alike doing the same activities and you think it's the same one. You put them side by side. And it's not. That's all. 
That one went right over my head. I, I know. That's, that's okay. probably a good thing. <laughs> I don't know. You know. Like Colin Farrell and Henry Cavill doing a movie six months apart or six years apart. Same thing. Basically. That's what I was talking about. Okay. We can just move on from this, Megan. All right. Let's just move on. All right. Um. So in November, on November, so she keeps this, she gets a DNA test. So they, they get a paternity test. They had to search all over the place to find one that does twins. Uh, and you gotta, I don't know. It's like some kind of sampling. And she did three of them. Sure. One of them she claimed went missing. The other two came back little to no fetal DNA. Now, the only reason why it's little to no is because it's like, that's just the reading. And they won't explain like the, the company that does it. They're like, well, we don't, we don't give exact numbers. And so little to no is just the reading. She claims it was diluted. Oh, she's got to do it again. But it comes back twice, little to no fetal DNA. That means if you had twins, even if the twins were, um, even if they were miscarried, you would still have fetal DNA. Fetal DNA actually stays in your body for years. There's no way that somebody pregnant with twins would have little to no fetal DNA. So you think it's over, right? Nope. Still not over. The court still is not making her turn over actual documents from actual doctors. So on November 2nd, there's another hearing. And now Clayton has a lawyer because the internet stepped up and got him one. And it turns out All right. he gets the lawyer. Oh, and she's so awesome. She's like Camille, man. I'll tell you, she is a, she's a bulldog. So I got he's over her shoulder. Like what? Yeah. What? They raised him money because they he he defended himself in the first one and he did a really good job for a pro se litigant, but he didn't, you know, he missed some stuff and he needed a lawyer. They well, raised him money because he can't close the deal, obviously. So he could not fund it himself as a realtor. He turned, he turned it turns out. Do you see this guy over here behind her lawyer? Do you see this guy in the black shirt? Yeah. That's victim number three. Ooh. That's Greg Gillespie and his wife, who's also pregnant, actually pregnant. This poor guy got dragged through court by this woman for over a year. I think it was almost two years. Yeah, but you know his wife was mad at him still. Oh, well, it's You know not she her. was. Megan, you know she was. Well, like, for what? Like, oh, you got her pregnant. Like, I did not. When we get mad at men over dreams, Megan, they're like, well, I dreamed you well, got her pregnant. True. I That's didn't true. though. I didn't do that yet. I've been mad about you might. Before. <laughs> I will dreams? admit. You won't. You don't say what dreams it was, unless it's. No, mind. there were funny ones. Like I would have, I'd have a dream that was like really random, bizarre things. Like my husband, I would dream that he left me somewhere. Yeah. You know that like I was in a restaurant and then he just disappeared, and <laughs> I woke up. I wake up. I wake up super angry with him. Like, why would you do that to me? Why the hell would you do that to me? He's like, so. I haven't even been in a restaurant in two years, <laughs> Megan. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, it's true. It's true. So in this one, she's still claiming she's 24 weeks pregnant. We've got another victim sitting over here waiting for his justice. I love this look on Clayton's lawyer's face, man. She's like, I'm going to get her. I'm going to get her. I don't remember what this clip is about, but they're all good. But you understand that Clayton has been very clear from day one that he did not have sexual intercourse with you, right? Um, Clayton was not. If you look at the June 4th message, he... Sam, these are yes or no questions. Do you understand that Clayton was very clear from day one that it's his position he did not have sexual intercourse with you? Then the answer is no. Uh-oh. Impeach the witness. Impeach her. But you understand that Clayton has been very... Okay, let's see. There's another one. You got to impeach the witness since he wouldn't. Dean, this is great. The piece of thing. You're not going <laughs> to stop, are you? No. Poor, Clay <laughs> Poor Clayton's been through enough. What? No. That, yeah, that's true. No, he hasn't been through enough because he hasn't been through her. <laughs> oh, wait. Why don't, isn't the volume boost working on this one? It's very low. Hold on. Let me try this that again. This is why I thought it was your problem with the audio earlier. I know. I'm I'm bad at this. Okay. Here, while you do that, let me read a couple super chats. Okay. Kimmy Joe says, Nick, Joe needs your help with his ungagging Trump lawsuit. <laughs> An ungagging would have done Clayton well. Uh, he has to go in front of the appellate court. Do you know anyone who could help? 
Robert Barnes. Uh, I, I, I mean, yeah, I know plenty of people who could help, I guess, but Joe probably knows the same people. Sandra D sent a sticker. Thank you. Jason Lopez. Hi, Nick. I love your show. My best friend is getting married this week and I need help with a speech for him. Uh, look, Jason, uh, you can email me and I will try to remember to check it or you can message me on Twitter or Instagram and uh, I can try and help you there, but I can't do it over a super chat during the show. Uh, Ghost, oh wait, Gnostic Man 0 says, just tune in, pardon my ignorance, but is this pre or post Amber Heard? Thought I heard it all, but this is some next level shit. So this happened after Amber Heard because this was mm -hmm. late 2023. Mm -hmm. But but wait, she started a long time ago. So if, if all of our information is correct, it actually started as far as we know, the first victim in 2014. Then she did it again to Greg Gillespie. I think she met him in 2021. Oh, and there was a guy in between Matt and Greg, a guy named Mike, who she did a TEDx talk about. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and he, she did that to him in 2016. She met him. So this has been like a pattern. She did a TEDx talk about Matt. No, uh, Mike, 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 victim number two. Okay. Not yeah. Matt was victim number one. Yeah. So right? Matt, then Mike, then Greg, then Clayton. God, this chick should have a bunch of kids by now. And yet no babies. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Pirate. Where'd she, where'd she put the babies, Megan? Where'd she put the babies? That's what we want to know. They're all staffing a Popeye's fried chicken right now. Uh, Pirate Queen says, guys, stop, stop killing your Richard in crazy. <laughs> Sandra D gifted five memberships. Thank you so much. And Drop Barracuda says, I hope she winds up being a trans woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's good. Okay, uh, let's let's sally forth, Megan. I apologize. All right, sally for forth. I do, like, I do like that phrase. I'm I apologize today. for Germany. What? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> As we sit here today, not a single DNA test has come back indicating that Clayton. Watch her face, right. Nick. Watch her the face. The samples were diluted, and I'm going back next month. Is what it I was. Can be yes or no question. It's a very simple question. As we sit here today, you have no DNA test that indicates that Clayton is the father, right? <laughs> the result. The testing is ongoing, is what I was told. <laughs> the testing is ongoing. Teacher, I have a question. Yes. How is the DNA test sample diluted? She's just making this shit up. Like, shouldn't the judge be like, come on now, what the fuck, though? Yes, yes. But none <laughs> of these judges... Okay, for, for one, you have to understand that this particular hearing is not about the family court case. It's not about the paternity. This is the protective order hearing that Clayton is trying to get against her because she won't stop texting, calling. He blocks her and then she goes around the block by getting a new phone number. Like she's legit stalking him at this point. So he's trying to get a protective order against her. So this judge is the protective order judge. And she's like, I don't give a shit about any of this family court paternity bullshit. She doesn't want to hear it. She doesn't even want to hear it when his lawyer is like, your honor. And she fights with her like three, four times. This woman has done this four times before. Multiple men. It's a pattern. You think it's she'd be good relevant. at it by now? <laughs> you would think. Right, like the first time I went golfing, I shot like a 150. And by the fourth time I went golfing, I shot like a 148. Like you, you know you get, like you get better every time, like every other time. She, she's not getting better at this. Although she's really, the thing is, is that she's been using the legal system to abuse men for a long time and, and she gets away with it because the men she's chosen have been men nobody knows about and nobody cares about because nobody knows them. She got, she made a mistake with Clayton Ecker because he had enough people who knew him, who knew who he was and who cared to say, hey, there's a problem here. And once it caught fire, it was like, oh, shit, now we're going to get him an attorney. Now he'll have representation. Greg Gillespie, that poor guy in the white in the uh, black shirt back there, he did. He ended up spending over a hundred thousand dollars fighting her off in court. Hideous. And the judge never ordered her to pay attorney's fees. It, it got dismissed with no sanctions against her. Yep. It's disgusting that these judges don't care enough. And this judge pisses me off because she doesn't. She she doesn't. When the case is done, Clayton should just hook up with the lawyer. She's cute. Isn't she cute? I know. Yeah. Love her. With Clayton. She looks like a couple people I know. Oh. Weird. So that's I don't know her. A couple occasions 
that the testing is ongoing. Correct. So is it your testimony that you provide these samples and that there's no results that are coming from these samples you're providing? I'm, <laughs> I'm unclear on what you're trying to ask. Me. You're unclear on how DNA tests work. Okay, well. Wants to give another sample. Yeah. They so, have to wait a month to give another sample. You can just give, like, DNA is there all the time. Wow, well, you got to replenish your DNA. Like, get, get some more so we can try again. The results that came back were um, little to no fetal DNA. Like, can that you, that was the result. Boost the volume, like, all the way. Chat's saying it's really low on the. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll, I Okay. And, guys, by the way, this is just a court problem. Like, it, I have it boosted up to 400, but I will now do it up to 600. Okay. Yeah, 600%. But that is like, as high as it'll go i'll try and put the closed captions on there we go although that's, then we won't be able to see her face that's like clayton busting through the line it's a tight end <laughs> here let's see uh this one this one is good not exhibit 46. all that you have from dr mccool here is a screenshot of an upcoming appointment for monday july 24th of 2023 right Correct. That <laughs> you, you, you understand that anyone can go online at a mommy where Dr. McCool works and make that an appointment for it for an OBGYN appointment with Dr. McCool. Correct. Um, the guy can say letters too, ma'am. Dr. McCool is a parent and calls a referral to have to see him because I have epilepsy. He's a high <laughs> specialist. He can't go and make an appointment with. Uh, yeah, just go and make an appointment. I have epilepsy. Spoiler alert: You can just make an appointment because Reddit went and did it. Like, yeah, of course anyone you, can just you can, go make an appointment. You can make appointments with specialists. You just usually have to get a referral for insurance purposes from yeah. your general practice but practitioner or care provider. Like that's literally this Doctor McCool. This Doctor McCool that she claims is this specialist perinatologist. You can literally go on his website and sign up for an appointment right there without anything. It's right there on the website. Reddit did it. This is it wasn't funny. she actually he didn't finish in her mouth, Megan. It was just Alka Seltzer or whatever. <laughs> oh God. For her fake epilepsy seizures. <laughs> I had to send records to get an appointment with him. That also was a lie because when the HIPAA release gets uh signed and Clayton's lawyer, Greg Woodnick, goes to get the records, guess what he's told? There's no HIPAA release. There's no there's no records. She's, yeah. there's she's not a patient. Okay, so I the only record that you provided this court with regarding your alleged high risk perinatologist is a screenshot of an appointment for Monday, July twenty fourth, twenty twenty three. In that exhibit forty six, <laughs> so funny the faces this woman makes. I have, and this one is the best one yet. These Ladies, don't ever like do the forehead tip right up next to your camera, your <laughs> shitty webcam. She looks like fucking Mega Mind over there. I know. It's her, so bad. Her it's... her prefrontal cortex may be pregnant. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So now watch her because she's gonna lose her mind. And I got the greatest screenshots from this one uh, because her faces are just hysterical. So this is when his her lawyer is gonna try and argue with the judge. Listen, judge. You have to do something about her because she's going to do it again. She's going to do this to other men if you don't stop her. And you have to let me bring in this evidence that she did it to other men, including the guy who's sitting in the courtroom right now. And, you know, let us do this. Let us argue it. And the judge doesn't care. She's like, no, I'm not going to allow it. But watch her face. She hates being called out that she's done this to other people. Miss, Miss Owens' pattern, her modus operandi, her pattern of behavior, her pattern of making the same claim she's latin at me other men in it was very Arizona effective within the last two years and i think it's highly relevant to this case because it supports why mr eckert needs this injunction against harassment because this individual has done this before and there are concerns that she will not stop they uh, uh, i'm gonna sustain the objection i'm not gonna allow that testimony so here's the frustrating yeah. thing like uh prior bad acts testimony and then of course what you ultimately want is like a vexatious litigant sanction um it's really hard to get because 
you have to have first for the prior bad acts, you have to prove that there's a reason that the prior bad acts are relevant to the current case. So you'd have to show like a um, a habitual pattern. You have to show like, uh, Oh, we have that. We have literally the same texts, the same contracts, everything the same, even twins that Greg Gillespie, she said he impregnated her with twins, Nick. It's the same story. Change up that story, woman. You got to be believable. <laughs> it's the same shit over and over again. She you should go to law school and learn how to lie better. I know what you're saying, that like it's normally hard. Not in this case. You could absolutely prove. And her lawyer is going to start arguing the judge and be like, no, judge. I, and she tries like three times. And it's great what she gets on the record, because without her arguing this hard, we wouldn't have it. Oh, and by the way, did you notice what she was swigging? Did monster you know energy. Was, yeah, monster drink. That's how I got pregnant. <laughs> I would ask, again, the court to reconsider here because this matter, it's very important that the court hears how Miss Owens has made the exact same allegations in another matter within the last two years. What's your face? She has committed perjury in her last, in the last hearing <laughs> because she made incorrect statements <laughs> This face, Nick, look at the screech. <laughs> it's like an Asmund Gold video uh, thumbnail. <laughs> I know. It's like, oh my God, Diablo 4 is so great. <laughs> it's the greatest thumbnail. But she's right. The attorney's right. She's made the exact same allegations against all of these other men. And it's and how does the judge not look at this behavior that she's seeing exhibited right in front of her and not be like, yeah, I kind of want to hear it? <laughs> I mean, I'm dying. I'm sorry. That looks exactly like an Asmund Gold thumbnail. <laughs> it looks like him. Like, I, is that him? Is that you should, actually as we should find court? one. You should find one. So we oh, can it won't take long. Hold on. Just find one so we can compare and contrast. Uh, hold on. Uh, let me just search. <laughs> David Gold. Nelson. That's funny. Monster Energy. Official drink of pregnant mothers. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, that's what you're supposed to do is increase your caffeine intake when you're pregnant. This is not medical advice. This is Laura Owens and what she does. Uh, and okay. I wouldn't recommend it. Look, I don't have an exact one here, but we'll just go through his list of videos. Look, look at this. Uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> if she had a beard, yeah, it'd be exactly. <laughs> There's one. There's one. Yeah. He looks uh -huh. like knockoff Russell Brand. Poor Asmongold. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> she should audition. He wouldn't even have to take photos anymore. <laughs> He's like, can you just react to your own testimony, please? And my editor will just grab screenshots for days. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, that's hilarious. And and wait till you see the other. I've got a great video for you. If you if you think that this is nuts, wait till you see the Facebook video that she posted whining about reddit and the and dave neal and reality steve calling her on her shit it's hysterical she made false statements under oath regarding the nature of that and miss all right so that's that so let's actually let's actually do that so this is something that she oh this is so unfortunate this is something that she posted on facebook Oh. To, to uh, that old. <laughs> and the other weird thing about her posting this on Facebook is that she thought people weren't going to get it and save it. So then when it didn't go well for her, she like tried to take it down. But yeah, no. Yeah, it's the fake crying video. My name is Laura Owens, and I know oh, that before it's way too loud. I even started to blow video, your ears out. People on Reddit just. Yeah, you wouldn't want to wait. I can control your video. Yeah, isn't That's that cool? cool as fuck. If I sh if I share a video file, we both have control over it, which is great. Ooh. You know, he should have blown her ears out. Then he would have had quadruplets, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> two ears, two times, four babies. <laughs> no reaction. Mary's just like, God, I hate him so. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, well, you got to have oh, some man. payback for all the shit you put me through over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> a couple of weeks has been longer than that, Megan. Come on now. Don't lie to the chat. <laughs> That's true. 
so hey, it's about time for the rumble flip, maybe right before this video as we get into it. Um, where cool. I'm gonna run and go to the bathroom. Well, first we'll okay. move to Rumble exclusively. I'm gonna run to the bathroom. I can play my peeing video if you want to take a, a short break. I usually take a little bit longer. Yeah, I've noticed. I'm I, old. Wa I'm I watched old. the chair for a while the other night. The chair hosted the stream quite well. Look, the chair's good at it. You never hailed, throw away a good thing. All hailed the chair. Except her babies. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, that's fine. So let's let's do, <laughs> let's do that rumble flip, <laughs> guys. We're gonna pop off of YouTube. We're gonna move over to Rumble exclusively. It's in the pin chat if you're on YouTube. It's also in the description. So please join us. Like that second blowjob, baby. Join the first one. <laughs> like the Lila followed Samson. Uh, come join us in just a few minutes over on Rumble. I will take a short break. Um, if I'm not back, maybe Megan will be back and she can, you know, entertain you. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to the <laughs> chat. Fine. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Uh, guys in 25 seconds, we will be on rumble exclusively. I will see you then. Peace. Peace. Oh, also follow Megan Fox on YouTube rumble, wherever she is. Twitter, I guess at her house. No, not that one. Don't do that. Don't follow her <laughs> at her house. That's no, what Sam Hyde please. would do. <laughs> We'll see you guys there.